Hi everyone, I am Teacher Niljan Orilla. Today, we are going to tackle about some contemporary issues and trends in English language and literature teaching. We are going to specifically focus on the following two issues. We have issue number one, which is performativity in education and its impact on Saudi ELT teachers' performance by Kulud Almani. And we have the second issue, which is the non-native problematizing the discourse and conscientizing the teachers by Amal Treki. Issue number one centers on the notion of a perennial issue on performativity, which leads to teachers' divided attention and intended fabrication and performance in doing bunch of school paperwork, losing focus and time on student interaction and instruction. During my presentation, I aim to have a fruitful discussion by exploring the performativity issues in education and its impact on English language teachers' performance here in the Philippines and abroad, discuss the findings and implications of performativity issues in education and its effect in classroom instruction. And I am also going to recommend possible solutions as a teacher in an educational institution. First, let us talk first about what is performativity. Performativity is actually a culture or a system of terror. It is a regime of accountability that employs judgments, comparisons, and displays as a means of control, attrition, and change. The performances of individual subjects or organizations serve as measures of productivity or output, or displays of quality or moments of promotion or inspection. These performances stand for, encapsulate, or represent the worth, quality, or value of an individual or organization within a field of judgment that is according to Ball 2013. Performativity issues are most prevalent in the Philippine educational system. It has long been established as part of educational performances assessment and evaluation processes. It originally aims to augment and create a systematic approach on how instruction must be conducted in every classroom. It provides a proper layout of how teachers should perform to attain the maximum potential of student learning in systematic manner. However, it posed greater issues during its implementation phase. Teachers are becoming more and more disturbed and consumed most of its time in preparation to pass the level of multiple evaluations that tested the teacher's personal performance rather than students' learning ab ability. It definitely lessens the teacher's attention to provide proper instruction to students that assess their learning. Examples of these are the quarterly and yearly conduct of the Philippine Professional Standards for Teachers, or the PPST, the RPMS or the Results-Based Performance Management System, and the daily submission of multiple and various types of reports coming from different departments which are always urgent in nature. Another problem for teachers working in a performative culture is that they find themselves continually inclined to create fabrications of evidence that is according to Clark 2013 to make their performance tangible, visible, and more importantly, measurable. This is a horrible fact. Most of the teacher's performance is guided on a system-based commodities sacrificing what is most essential in teaching. They try to fabricate and manifest reports and tasks which are somehow irrelevant but have to comply since it is required by the system. The practicability and logicality of highly technical solutions to directly aid teaching issues are heavily compromised. As Hilda Cordero Fernando stated in her short story, The Visitation of the Gods, sabi niya, visitation was, after all, 99% impression, and Mr. Olbis, the principal, had promised to remember the teacher's cooperation in that regard in the efficiency report. The governmental control embedded in systems of measurement and performativity tend to be presented simply as a way of representing quality, 
but the way that these systems operate through observation of teachers, annual reviews and self-reviews show how these systems come with a flow of changing demands that make teachers continually recorded and constantly accountable and responsible for monitoring and disciplining themselves. In this context, it seems that teachers are like robots who are likely to follow only what they are programmed to do instead of taking action on what is necessary and practical in their field. In a positive sense, these systems can drive teachers to a more systematic and less chaotic working environment. It can create harmony upon teachers with different levels of understanding and different teaching levels. However, some researchers and experts in the field are saying more teachers are becoming passive teachers, following only the rules and complying only what the government requires, thereby sacrificing the most important educational needs of the learners who need the teachers' attentions more. This study of Kulud Almani works on the idea of critical theory. Critical theory is concerned with social critique, social reformation, and social justice. Its ultimate aim is to reveal the system of power relations and to unmask ideology to hidden agendas that help in perpetuating different forms of inequality in society so as to bring about social justice. Critical theory attempts to find out the conditions that would help society to freely act upon itself, such as effective participation and social solidarity. The study specifically sought to answer the following question, which is, how do performative practices affect Saudi primary, intermediate, and secondary English language female teachers' performance? This question does not investigate English language teachers' perception of performativity, its impact on their performances and identities, and by seeking teachers' responses to self-support measures and then subjecting them to correlational analysis for theory verification. Nor does it seek to construct the multiple meanings of performativity that English language teachers hold in a particular context. The research participants of the study comprised of 15 English language teachers in their mid-career professional life in the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia or KSA. These were selected through purposiveness and accessibility. In the data analysis, the researcher used the six linear phases of thematic analysis as described by Clark and Braun in 2016. First, they familiarize with the data, they provide coding, then they search for themes, then they review these themes, and after that, defining and naming the themes, which requires the researcher to write a detailed analysis of each theme, and, and writing up to tell the reader a coherent and persuasive story. I know that we are now very interested as to the findings of this study. So first, let us discuss what are the findings the researchers found. As the researchers ask our respondents, these are some of the answers that they got. First, one of the teachers said that because of the performativity issues, she said, I am no longer enjoying it, the teaching. Most of what we're doing is filling out papers to provide evidences or trying to adopt to new teaching approaches that are imposed on us without any preparation, too much to do, and so little time. Another teacher said, do experts really know better? I wish I can meet those who put these standards. Have they taught in schools or just imagined how would it be like? Do they live in the same world that we live in? Another teacher said that I am living the profession for good. I don't mind my annual rise to be performance related if I am going to be evaluated by a qualified team. But if I am going to be at the mercy of the stupid school manager or a stupid supervisor, well, <laughs> to get this rise, then it is a big no and I will definitely leave for good. Of all the participants interviewed, six of them actually shared their intention to quit teaching by choosing to go for an early retirement. How sad. Furthermore, 
another teacher said, I do love teaching, but now I feel I'm out of place. What brought me to the profession does no longer exist. I, lo I lost any feeling of satisfaction or accomplishment. I am exhausted trying to cope with the constant changes. Every year, they have a new version of their audit system with new demands and new requirements. I find it very hard to manage the stress and that's why I am saying goodbye. Oh, that's so sad. More and more teachers are saying, you are expected to teach according to a new scheme without any preparation or training whatsoever. And all that they do is just to tell you that the manual is available online and the attitude is like, get on with it. But what I even hate more is being constantly watched simply because they want to make sure that I am working in line with their new scheme. I am neither prepared or nor trained for. Your books, lesson plans, and exam papers are all continuously checked. I can't handle this anymore and I'm happy to retire early as, and I wouldn't give it a second thought. Another teacher said that after five years, I have realized that I made a wrong decision to be a teacher. I have now started a small business on Instagram and I will resign soon. What is happening now is really sickening. I can spend the whole day describing how we are being constantly watched and monitored. In response to the interview question, do you think performativity and its technological systems meet expectations from the field in terms of the teachers, students, administrators, and policymakers? And how? These are their answers. One of the teachers said they should pay more attention to core educational issues. Take, for example, elementary schools. Many teachers teach subjects they are not qualified for. Last year, she taught art for the fifth grade besides teaching English and all that they did was giving them or her the manual and the phone number of the previous art teacher who was in a maternity leave. Another teacher answered, if probably half of the money and effort was directed to the right direction such as providing school buildings and equipment or at least improving the miserable conditions of rented school buildings, only then we can talk about real reform. But what happens now is either reducing teaching and learning to a number of statistics and formulas or buying a new curriculum series that look quite similar to previous ones, just repackaged under different name. One more teacher said, we are so focused on making sure everything looks as it should be from the outside to the extent that we forgot what we're really here for. Are we here to help students learn or just to please the school principal? They are absolutely taking education to the wrong direction. In answer to interview questions related to how performativity impacted teachers' performance, comments like, give them what they want or you have no choice but to do what they want you to do were repeatedly used by some participants to describe how they found themselves obliged to engage in acts of fabrication now what do you mean by fabrication when we talk about fabrication it means that it is a demonstration of knowledge and skills to simply doing as little as required to get a course of credit to contribute to positive school outcomes, creating an illusion of success. In relation to fabrication, one teacher said, just learn how to make the school principal happy. That's all what it takes now to be a good teacher. And most importantly, never try to question any command or to try to understand the logic behind it, as this might be understood as an attempt to critically examine it and resist it. Just show absolute submissiveness and you will be safe. Further, one teacher also said that we had a whole week of inspection by an external team. We had several months notice and both teachers and management teams spent considerable time to prepare and make everything look at its best. I refined my lesson plan and crammed every teaching strategy that I could muster into the specified lesson. I was confident and excited to perform a lesson I've been preparing for weeks. During the discussion with the inspector, 
after the lesson, I explained my reasons for not using the objective poster, and her reaction was, you should have done it, at least for this lesson. You know why? Because it is inspection day. It seems that because of this scenario, teachers are more forced to fabricate their outputs. In answer to the interview question, can you talk to me about the recent changes in your practice to meet the performative requirements? One teacher said, I used to do spelling competitions and show and tell presentations to help students practice speaking as well as other extracurricular activities for my students that we both enjoyed greatly. Now the school principal told me, I can only do one activity and I won't get any credit for doing more than one extra activity. So it is a waste of time to do something that doesn't really count in my evaluation. Another question was raised by the researchers to the respondents, which is, how do you feel about having to match the requirements of performative systems? Some teachers actually show positive regards when they answer this question. Let's read one. Here, actually, now we know what we are required to do and what elements are going to be included in our evaluation. This keeps me focused and helps me direct my effort on what should be done first. Another teacher said, actually, now we have a framework to work within and we are offered definite guidelines. There is nothing I hate more than working in a chaotic school environment. One more teacher said that regardless of being meaningless or not, these requirements work as guidelines and describe my task and responsibilities. In this way, I know my duties and my rights. In a previous school, the principal used to assign me a different task that was nothing to do with teaching English. I worked as a reprographer and a student's advisor besides teaching English, but now they can't do that. Lastly, one teacher said, when there is a workshop or a training program, the school principals usually either send teachers they favor or those with little teaching loads. But now, all teachers have equal opportunities to attend to professional development programs as this will affect the overall evaluation of the school. After hearing all the sides of the teachers, what are the theoretical and practical contributions of this study to the administrators and curriculum planners and implementers? First, this study makes a major theoretical contribution in the sense that it presents a new perspective from which to approach the phenomenon of, of performativity and its consequences on educational policies and practices in Saudi context. Another contribution might be, you know, the findings hold relevance to key audiences and underscore the importance of considering the corporate logic in educational setting in the KSA from a different perspective. So what are the things that we learned out from this study? We know that performative imperatives offer them a guide, a definite guideline that help teachers to know where to direct their efforts and how they're going to be evaluated. Another, performativity and the audit culture have negatively changed their performance and practices. They believe that the surveillance culture has led to a damaging attitude, preoccupied with reaching targets and satisfying imposed criteria. Another thing that we can learn from it is that teachers and educators must be included in the process of generating and implementing educational policies as excluding them can result in a loss of connectedness, connectedness as they cease to find meaning and essence in their everyday practice hopefully guys my discussion is clear i also hope that this video lesson will result in a positive impact towards the curriculum implementation by being open and considerate to the results of a verified study again this is Neljan aurelia sharing to you my report in one of my courses in the master's degree under my dear professor dr lloyd hunahunan if you have some questions you can reach me in my FB account. Thank you so much everyone for listening.